Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a schwannoma, which is a benign nerve sheath tumor. And this tumor, as the name suggests, arises from Schwann cells. The cells are very spindled in nature, and we will have a look at that when we zoom in later. But first, I would like you to appreciate the low magnification or the low power appearance that this is a very well circumscribed oval shaped mass. At the periphery, we can actually see a fibrous capsule. Moving around this lesion, we are able to appreciate that there are some areas that are bluer and some paler areas. And as I move around here again, some paler, less cellular areas and some bluer, more cellular areas. And we can see this again here, bluer, more cellular areas, paler, less cellular areas. This is known as a biphasic appearance on low magnification. Biphasic because there are areas that are more compact and cellular, and there are other areas that are much less cellular and have a more pale appearance on low magnification. Let's have a look at another section from the same tumor which shows another feature of schwannoma. These are further sections taken from the same tumor and what we can see here are these large empty cystic spaces. And this reddish area, which is hemorrhage, cystic change and hemorrhage can sometimes occur in schwannomas, especially the larger tumors. We are now back at our original section, and let's take a closer look at the cells. Schwannomas are formed from cells that have very elongated, slender nuclei. You can see here that the nuclei are a little bit wavy. Another example here. Some are shorter, others are longer. They are relatively uniform and all appear to be very spindle. And there is some fibrillary eosinophilic material between the nuclei. The cytoplasm of the spindle cells is very ill-defined. These are Schwann cells. And in some areas, you'll notice that the nuclei tend to line up. And this is known as nuclear palisading. Here again, the nuclei are lining up. When we see several nuclear palisades, for example, one row here and another row here. And this is separated by fibrillary pinkish material. This is known as a Verroque body. We have another example here with a nuclear palisade and another palisade here and this pinkish fibrillary material. So this is another Verroque body. Usually, Verroque bodies are seen in the more cellular areas. The more cellular areas of a schwannoma is known as the Antony A areas, whereas the more hypocellular, looser areas are known as Antony B areas. Again, we can see very beautiful nuclear palisading here. Another feature of schwannoma is the presence of hyalinized blood vessels, this means that the blood vessel walls appear to be thickened and replaced by this homogeneous, glassy looking, pale eosinophilic material. So we have a blood vessel here with some red blood cells and leukocytes in the lumen. And this blood vessel shows a hyalinized wall, a thickened, glassy, pinkish appearance. And another blood vessel here with a hyalinized wall. Let's learn a bit more about schwannomas. Schwannomas are benign nerve sheath tumors arising from Schwann cells, and they can occur at any age. Most are sporadic, but a small percentage may be associated with syndromes such as neurofibromatosis type 2. So they can occur at any soft tissue site in the limbs, the head and neck, and they can even occur in the posterior mediastinum or retroperitoneum and the visceral organs such as the gastrointestinal tract. There is a separate video describing the gross features of schwannoma with demonstration 
of a virtual pathology specimen. So schwannomas are usually well circumscribed, and we saw the capsule in our example earlier. And these virtual pathology specimens are taken from our free online pathology resource path web. You can scan this QR code to register, or the link for free registration is in the video description. Microscopically, we see the biphasic appearance that I demonstrated earlier with paler, less cellular, and bluer, more cellular areas. This is usually more apparent in larger tumors, and this may not be appreciated in small tumors. Here again, we can see the more cellular Antony A areas with verroquet bodies and the less cellular Antony B areas. Schwannomas are composed of these relatively uniform spindle cells with slender, wavy nuclei and ill-defined cytoplasm. Here is another picture to show the prominent nuclear palisading. Sometimes we may see other interesting features such as ancient change, and this is when there are scattered very large atypical looking cells with huge nuclei. They often have a degenerative smudgy appearance to the chromatin, and usually among these areas with ancient change, mitotic figures are very few. We also see these blood vessels with thickened, glassy-looking halenized walls and sometimes containing small fibrin thrombi. Cystic change can also occur, and we saw this again earlier in this particular case that I'm demonstrating. And very interestingly, in the gastrointestinal tract, schwannomas occurring here tend to have a very prominent rim of lymphocytic cells at the periphery of the tumors. There are several variants, such as ancient schwannoma, where there is extremely prominent ancient change, as well as vascular hyalinization. And the plexiform schwannoma, which is quite rare, it may be seen in neurofibromatosis type 2. And this tumor has a classical multinodular appearance, rather than just one single mass, because it involves multiple nerve vesicles. In summary, this is a schwannoma an encapsulated tumor composed of biphasic areas of more cellular Antony A areas and less cellular Antony B areas. The cells have spindled slender nuclei with ill-defined cytoplasm and we can see very prominent nuclear palisading. This is a verroquet body with a double nuclear palisade and intervening fibrillary eosinophilic areas. This tumor also demonstrates the presence of hyalinized blood vessels. This is a benign tumor and excision is curative. Thank you.